So let's say it's a solid cylinder like this. And then it's got a uh, wrapped around it like this uh, wire. It goes all the way, uh, well, if it's a cylinder, it would look kind of like this. Like that, so it would go like that, come back, come like this, and then it'll be number a bunch of turns, like this kind of. Okay, so let's say this is uh, uh, 25 degrees. So let's say you have uh, the, it's a solid cylinder. And the mass is two kilograms, radius is one meter. Uh, maybe give the length. Length is, um, well, let's make this a little smaller. The radius, let's say it's um, 20 centimeters and the length is 80 centimeters. Uh, and, um, oh, and then let's say there is 50 loops of wire, right? And now let's change up the direction of the bees. Let's say the bee field is this way. Instead of being top to down, we can make it left to right. So then I can say, what should the current and direction, what should the current magnitude, I should say current magnitude and direction be so that the cylinder stays in place, stays in the same place. So that means it doesn't rotate and go down, right? Stays in the same place. B, now we can say if the, if the current direction is reversed, the direction is reversed, what is the initial acceleration of the cylinder. So this is another problem where uh, it has a, um, refers back to physics 101 quite a bit, uh, right? So now what is the free body diagram? We have the normal force, right? And then we've got uh, the friction, Fs and then mg. Okay, now is there a net force due to the wire? The wire is a loop. So remember that when we analyze the net force on the wire, we saw that it's zero, as long as it's a closed loop of wire. So this one is a bit different than the, what we did yesterday. With yesterday, there was a net force. Uh, remember the problem was you had a battery here, and there was a, a cylinder that was uh, rolling down. There, there's a current, right? And then as the cylinder rolls down, there was a magnetic force on that wire that was pushing it, something like that, I think, in that problem. So this is quite a bit different than this. Here, you have a loop of wire, essentially the loop of wire is around the cylinder, you see, and then there's a current there. So there's no net force, but there is a torque, depending on what the direction of the, of the, um, the current is. So if we know that the, the friction is this way, up this way, what should the direction of the current be? So now this is, um, the magnetic field. So let's do the torques. The torque due to the, the friction is which direction? R crossed into F out of the board. 
right? So the torque due to the friction is out of the board. So that tends to make that tends to make the cylinder want to rotate this way. Do you see down the incline? So we want the torque due to the magnetic moment to be into the board. So this is the torque due to the friction. So which direction should the current be flowing? If it goes this way, and then that, and then back, and this way, then which direction will the, if that's the direction of the current, right? So imagine you have a bunch of wires wrapped around like this. They go like this, into the board, back, and then out of the board. So what's the direction of the mu now? Okay, so then it'll be like this, this way, right? So the mu vector will be in the same direction as the n. So does that work? If I take the cross product of the mu vector with the b, does that give me into the board or out of the board? Mu crossed into b, into the board. There you have it. That's what it needs to be, into the board. So the current needs to be going this way, in like this and out, out of the cylinder and then back like that, wrapped like that, you see? So then the mu will be this way, mu crossing to be into the board. Okay, there you have it. So the current needs to be going, how do we answer that? Uh, what should the, the current direction be? Well, I'm assuming you're viewing it from the top. The viewer is viewing it from the top. So is it going to be clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, let's see here. Going like this. From the top. That's um, I'm kind of doing it like this. Your eye is here and then visualize if the current is flowing this way. Then go like this and bring your eye like that. Oh, okay, then that's uh, counterclockwise, right? Yep, counterclockwise. So the answer is counterclockwise. These questions are tricky, the direction questions. Let's see, so viewed from the top, it goes like this, your eye, then goes like that, then you twist your eye, and then you say, ah, okay, it looks like it's counterclockwise, okay? Okay, now let's figure out all these forces and torques. So the forces are gonna be what? Um, in the X direction, X, Y. So the force is Mg sine theta is gonna be equal to Fs in the X direction force. Uh, y direction, I don't really need to analyze that. Uh, yeah, I just need mg sine theta is fs. So if it's, if it's not accelerating, then this force is balanced with this force. And then the torques is going to be what? Um, it's going to be the torque due to the, the friction, r times fs, is equal to the torque due to the mu vector. So what is that? Uh, mu crossed into the B. So mu B sine of the angle between the mu B. So what would that angle be? B is this direction, and it would be this angle, alpha. Tricky stuff, huh? So you have to figure that angle now. This angle is, the, is, this, is this one, the 25. That's this guy here. That's the 25. So then what's the alpha? Uh, it's related to the 25, right? So it'd be B like that, mu. This is going to be mg. This is 25. So this is the alpha. So then this would be, this is 90. So this would be what? Um, 65, and then alpha would be the supplementary angle to 65, so 180. 
minus 65. That'll be 115. Yeah, so you can do sine of 115. Here, the sine of 115. So we have here RFS is equal to mu B sine of 115. But then FS is equal to, you can substitute that over there. FS is equal to MG sine of 25. Right? So MG sine, that's sine of this angle. Uh, MG R MG. So I'm, I'm taking the FS from here, substituting it into here. R F S mu is going to be N I A, right? N I A, uh, and then B, and then sine of one fifteen. Well, sine of one fifteen is the same thing as sine of sixty five. So you could just replace that if you want with uh, the sine of that is the same as sine of that. So sine of sixty five. Okay, so now put in everything. Uh, what's the radius of the... Um, look at the radius of it. It said, we said it's 20 centimeters. I could probably keep this in centimeters, 20 centimeters. The mass is two kilograms. G is 9.8, sine 25. The um, number of turns was 50 loops. 50 loops. The current I, the area would be what? The area would be the area, the area of this. So what would that be? The diameter of the cylinder, right? The diameter of the cylinder times the length. Yeah, that's it. Just the diameter times the length. Because it's wrapped this way comes back, you see. So it's, it's actually looks like a rectangle. So diameter times the length, so that would be 40 times 80, right? 40 times 80. 40 centimeters times 80 centimeters. Um, so that's N is 50, I is, I uh, area B was given as was B given. Okay, let's say B is 0.4 Teslas. Okay, 0.4 Teslas sine of 65. Okay, and what were we ever we asked to solve? The I, right? The current. Okay, so the centimeters, this one can cancel with this one and just gives you a two. But then this one, I do have to change it to meters. So that centimeter cancel with that just gives you a ratio of two. And then this one gives you 0.8 meters. Okay, now I can solve for 50, uh, for the I. Divided by 50, divided by 2, divided by 0.8, divided by 0.4, divided by 65, sine. 
Okay, so the current 0.2856 amps. That much current would be sufficient to keep that cylinder from uh, rolling down the uh, incline. Cool. Okay, so now if I switch the direction of the current, what's going to happen? If the current direction, let's say I keep the same magnitude, but I switch the current direction. So now the current is flowing this way. Right, so now what's the direction of the, the mu vector? So now it's going to be like this. The mu vector reverses. And now the mu vector is down this way. Well, then the mu vector always likes to be aligned with the B, so that it's going to go like this. So actually now the magnetic torque due to the magnetic field is going to make it even rotate more. So this is going to spin this way to be aligned with that. And then its acceleration is going to be, uh, is going to be even faster. So what changes then? So then it actually starts to accelerate down the hill. So in the X direction we have mg sine theta uh, is minus fs is equal to ma. So in other words, it actually goes down and it accelerates down the hill. Instead of being equal to each other, it has a net acceleration down the hill. And then between this, the torques add up. So instead of the torques being equal to each other, the torques add up. So you have RFS plus mu B sine alpha is equal to um, I alpha, where alpha is the angular acceleration. Okay, so um, let's see here, how do we solve this? Well, in this case, alpha is what? Well, the mu has changed the directions. The mu is down this way now. So alpha is the 65. Well, it didn't really matter if the alpha was the 115 or the 65. We're taking sine of it anyway. So this is gonna be just sine of 65. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna solve for Fs from here, mg sine of 25 minus ma. Take that and substitute into this Fs. So we have r mg sine 25 minus ma plus mu b sine 65 is equal to the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder, half m r squared times alpha. Uh, okay, so then the r alpha is going to be a tangential, and an a tangential is just going to be a, right? So then we just replace this with half m a. Okay, so then this r is going to multiply by here. Uh, distribute this, so we have RMG sine 25, and then plus this guy, mu B sine 65, then you have half MA, and then R times negative MA is going to go to the other side as a positive RMA. Okay, so let's see if we did that right. RMG sine 25, negative RMA goes to the other side. Mu B sine uh, 65, half MA. Now I can factor out the A and we have an equation that we can solve for the A. Physics 101 is big in this problem. <laughs> so we have uh, RMG sine 25 plus mu B sine 65 
is equal to a uh, m a half plus r. R is equal to oh we can okay so now we're gonna put here the R was uh oh then we should put the mu is NIA right okay so now we could put the R is 0.2 meters mass is two kilograms nine point eight sine 25 plus the number of turns 50 yep current was what 0.2856 in other words i'm using the current from the first portion uh but i've, I've just reversed its direction and then the area was what the diameter times the length right so that's 0.4 meters times the length was 0.8 meters so N is this guy, I, N, I, A, 0.4 times uh, that, times the B. So you want to make sure you don't forget anything. B was 0.4 Teslas times sine 65 is equal to the mass, which is 2 kilograms, A, half plus 0.2. Whoa, a lot of stuff. Okay. Plus point two, um, it's going to be point seven times two, one point four a. I'll divide this number by one point four. Okay, a center of mass two point three six 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 meters per second squared. That's only the initial acceleration. It's not going to be constant because as it spins. The direction between the mu and uh, the direction between the mu and the b is going to change, so it's not a constant acceleration. Okay, cool, nice physics one on one review plus the magnetic moment torque concept. <laughs>